Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining me again. It's a pleasure. I'm having an issue with the timber trailer. The hydraulic drive motors are leaking. And at first I thought it was just the seals that were bad, but unfortunately it turned out to become a lot more expensive than that. So let me show you what we're dealing with here. This is a lid for the motor. As you can see, I've already changed this one. It's the exact same situation on the other side for some reason. Apparently this is a weak part. The entire seal face here has sheared off. The seal sit inside here, this is an old seal, goes in there and then there's a dust ring from the outside. And around here there's a dust seal. So this is supposed to be one piece. It's broken off for some reason on both sides, it's, it's the exact same. I have another one, let me show you. So this is for the other side, this was for this side. So apparently this is a weak part. This is a Danfoss MV600 or MV400, something like that. This seems to me as cast iron, or well, definitely is cast iron, you can see it inside of here, that this entire piece has been cast and then it has been machined. So I don't know if the casting on these have been a bit bad for, you know, this exact batch of motors or something or if this is a common failure, but at least it's the exact same. So I've had another piece made from my local machinist down here. And so he made this one for me first, because this was the first one I pulled off. This was leaking oil like crazy. It was dripping when I got the trailer, it was dripping just a little bit, like tiny, tiny droplets. I didn't think much of it. It's an old trailer, I didn't really care. But then it started leaking more and more. And eventually I decided, well, I got to do something about this. So I pulled off the sprocket and I saw that this had come apart. I have a bunch of seals here. They do have seal kits for, for the motors, like complete kits. Uh, those are about 90 bucks a piece. And I'm not really sealing the entire motor, so that's pointless. I just bought the seals individually, which was a bit harder to figure out. This one's pretty easy because it has numbers inside. You can just look them up and order the exact one. But for the dust seal, it was a bit more complicated. This one does ha doesn't have any numbers. And so I had to go for measurements and uh, figure out what type of seal it was. Thankfully, I ordered five of each. So we have for the other side too. So anyway, he made another one of these and we're gonna be replacing this on the other side, just as I've done here off camera. I had to order a tool for that. Let me show you. I ordered this behemoth of a bearing puller or something. It's pretty big. But it's hydraulic, it's very nice. The build quality on this is insanely good for the price that I paid for it. I'm very impressed. And so you basically just hook it up and you sort of jack on this thing. And it pulls it right off. All right, that's enough of that. Unfortunately, I didn't buy new O-rings. I should have done that. So we're just gonna have to reuse the old ones because they're quite big. I don't, have, I don't have this size in my kits. So we'll throw some seals in this. Mount it just like this one on the other side, of course. And then we'll throw some paint on there. Put the sprockets back on and this should be done. You always go with the spring towards the pressure and this face part away from pressure. So this goes in here like that. All right, there we go. And the dust seal goes the other way, actually. So it is supposed to have the hollow part out. All right, there you go. Sealed up, ready to be put on. Um, let's put some Vaseline. So, yeah, let's put some Vaseline on the dust ring here. And then the O-ring, which is hopefully still good, right there. Now let's mount it. So my first thought when I saw the failure point was that the bearing had gone and the shaft has started to wobble right there wasn't any real damage to the seals and the shaft too is completely there's literally no play in either direction the bearing and everything seems completely fine and let's try not to 
scrape the seal along the rusty shaft. Right, there we go. Right, that's nice. Let's clean up these bolts a little bit because all well, since we're going to be painting this. There we go, all cleaned up. I don't know where my blue Loctite is, so I have this green. It's pretty strong. Way stronger than the blue one. Just put a little dab, something like that. Just a tiny bit. There it is, all mounted, tightened up properly. Let's just scuff up the paint a little bit. I was hoping I'd get by with just one coat, but I'm not. I'm gonna have to do another one. Let this get a little bit tacky and then I'll do another coat. But in the meantime, I can do the other side. Painting is really boring, so I'll get back to you once it's all done. All right, that's it. Two coats on each side. And I had quite a bit of paint left over, so I just used it up in various spots around the trailer. When I start hammering this on, it's going to knock a lot of this dirt into the paint. I'll leave this for a couple of hours until it's surface dry. And then we'll put the sprockets on. So, see you then. All right, so it is the next day now. I got a bit caught up with some uh, meetings and with the sheep yesterday. But the paint here is all dried now. This side I've already cleaned up and put the key back in. And also, look what I found. The blue Loctite that I was looking for yesterday. I'll apply some of this fluid film onto the shaft here so that it doesn't get rusted stuck again. Should be fine, don't need too much of it. It should go a little bit further. See if I can find a bolt that's long enough to drive it in. That worked pretty nicely. A decent amount of Loctite on this. Whoa, that's too much, but okay. I think that should be, seems to be in the middle of the wheels here. I think this sprocket should bottom out and then once it's sort of bottomed out, then it's in the middle, right? In the middle of the treads and wheel. But these treads are not actually for this timber trailer. You can see how they have these notches here. And they don't really align with the sprocket. So these, originally, these are straight straight across so that these can grip inside. Anyway, that's one side done. That was way smoother.